It's not always easy to find information about certain areas in the Philippines. Just like restaurant reviews around the world, people tend to go to those who have been previously visited, resulting in everyone just going to the same place. The same can be said about travel. The guides you'll find online are often repetitive. The only way to get to know a province that doesn't have much written about it is to contact locals, people who have a stake in making sure that visitors have the best time. Travel is becoming more accessible, and with that, the places you once loved because of their peaceful isolation might be getting crowded. But that doesn't mean there's nowhere else to look. The Philippines is a country filled with adventure, from the mountains to the sea. Grab a car and create your own journey. This is Going Coastal. We've been on the road now for two days, making the long drive from Manila to Camarines Norte in one day. We slept in this amazing farm stay and are now headed further south. Camarines Norte is an adventure traveler's dream. Most places are still very much under the radar. While driving down, you could stop by the heritage houses of Vinsons, the gold town of Paracle, or take a day trip to Calagos Islands. Quite a bit has been covered there, so since we were short on time, we headed to Daet first. Daet is one of those towns that has so much potential. It has a small, thriving surf community, has one of the longest coastlines and boulevards in the country, and is at the center of the province and all of its activities. Bagascas Beach is the beating heart of the area. So we finally made it to Bagaspas. Uh, this is a really cool long boulevard. There's a bunch of like restaurants and shops. It definitely is off season. It definitely is a Tuesday, so there wouldn't be a lot of people, but these places look like they've been shut for a while. So I'll ask around and see what's happened here, but it would look like the perfect place to come surfing and hang out. Um, and it's an absolutely beautiful coast. So we're about to meet Kevin. Uh, who's going to be our local guide for the next two days, as well as a bunch of his friends. We're going to get some food and then do a bunch of island hopping and lots of other fun stuff. This looks like way too much fun. I'm going to go ahead and join them. Okay, I haven't surfed in four years, so I'm about to make the biggest joke of my own, my, myself. Let's see how this goes. I'm super excited though. Like, we have the beach all to ourselves. There's literally only three people in the water. Post-surf snack over here at this place called Leo's. Really good calamari. Um, so this beachfront is insane. I love surf towns in general because I feel like there's a certain culture that you can't really put your thumb on. A vibe that is just pervasive all over in every kind of different establishment and all the people you meet are very kind of chill and laid back, which is always really fun to meet kind of these locals. So the waves are great. I wasn't too great this time around, but I feel like this whole coast works. Certain times of the year, obviously during the season, which is right now, September onwards, you would get some days with really good waves and not just over here in Daet, but all throughout the coast that we've been driving, 100%, you'll see some spots that are working in these different areas. Some of the establishments here are really fun. Like this one, for example, everything's made from kind of like recycled wood, really organic, it feels nice. The food's absolutely great. So I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna get all the boys together. There are lots of smaller restaurants and coffee shops on this boulevard and I'm sure that during weekends or holidays, lots of locals would hang around here. We headed to Hukba'an, a beach resort and restaurant to grab some food before going island hopping. And then I'm prepare to leave Pagkai to leave this island. Mercedes is the sleepy little brother of Diet. It's a quiet area with lots to offer. Aside from its fish market that we will visit later, it's known for its Siete Picados, or seven islands, each more unique than the next. These are Apuao Grande, Apuao Pequeña, Caringo, Canton, Canimog, Kinapagian, and Malasubi. 
From snorkeling to surfing to diving to camping in the rawest locations, I wish we had more time to explore the area. We had lunch on the privately owned Karingo Island that has its own fish sanctuary and seaweed farms. Let's try the baba baba. Mm. It's like a mild bagong. Really tasty. I can see how this can be used in like tons of different dishes. A quick 15 minute boat ride away is Apuao Pequeña, an island covered with agoho trees and a bat sanctuary. This is island two of five and it is so unique. I've never seen something like this in the Philippines before. Um, the trees, I'm not sure if they're planted or if they were here. I feel like they were maybe planted, but it just looks absolutely magical. It keeps everything nice and cool. There are some kubos here that people can actually sleep overnight in and it's just the type of travel that I love. Bring everything back to the shore that you brought onto the island and just kind of do it yourself, make your own adventure, bring some music, bring your friends, bring a couple of beers. It's just the kind of island I just want to spend more time in. Let's take a look around. Old man all alone. Most of the islands in this group have some little treks, white sand beaches, and campsites. So you could really cover quite a bit over a weekend. Para sa amin na bilang isang lokal dito sa Camarines Norte, especially here at Mercedes, isang honor na andito po kayo dahil pwede nyo pong maipakita sa mga manonood nyo na kung gano'ng kaganda sa Camarines Norte. These trips for us are work, so yes, we have fun, but we also have to think about the next day and what's happening at the office in Manila. It's hard when you're in places like this. It's like having one foot in and one foot out. I could imagine camping here for a couple of nights, jumping from island to island with a group of friends, traveling slow, and just start every day with a new experience. But that's for another time. This area is also known for its rivers and fresh water. You'll find lots of small resorts tucked away in lush greenery, all flanked by little rivers. We're staying at this resort um, right next to a riverbed, which is really cool. I can hear the rushing water, so they said we could go tomorrow morning, but I feel like I'm going to be taking a shower there tonight. Um, and they prepared some beautiful local picolana food for us. We have sinantolan, kinunot, and some beautiful lying, and the lying looks super intense. Let's try the quinoa first. Mmm, that's tasty. I just love the intensity of flavors, and the way they kind of like layer the ginger, the garlic, the chili, everything that's in there. The laing has like tiny fish in it. See, these are little things. Like I thought laing for me, there's one main way of making it, but ever since being here in Camarillo's North, I've found that we've had different types of lime. Mmm. The dried gabi leaves here, super smoky. The coconut milk is completely cooked down until it's become just mostly oil. Finally, what I've been really excited about, Sinantola. Sinantola is one of my favorite fruits. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. This is so hard to eat without rice, by the way. Like, this is the type of food that I got. You need two cups of rice. I thought it was going to be cool and not take rice, but you really do need rice to really enjoy this because it's so intense and so good. Baby, we got that song. The younger me would probably look for a bar or some local nightlife, but nowadays, swimming with some friends in cold river water sounds like a party. You gotta love the frantic energy of a baksakan or what they call here pandawan in the morning. The fish is coming straight off the boat, being hauled into these kind of like different areas where uh, one person handles the brokerage of the fish and kind of sells the fish and people are kind of bidding and looking at fish and, 
and weighing everything down. It's just, it's always a great frantic energy that I absolutely love. We actually went to the wrong, but that one first, we went to the one in Da'et, but that was only operating at 11 p.m. So we're there at four in the morning. Now we're here in the Mercedes one, which operates much earlier. We got here a little late, but we still got a ton of shots to show you what it feels like here. And it has just some of the freshest cash you'll see. This will be shipped all around the country, all around the region. So you can tell that the fish that they have here, the catch they have here, is really great quality. So now it's gonna be a little intense. It's 5 a.m., the sun's coming up. We're gonna buy some fish, and then we're gonna have it cooked. So I'm really excited about that. I mean, if you spent enough time in ports and in like baksakans like here, you know that Tenola and Sinigang are considered breakfast foods because they're the easiest to cook, especially when the fishermen go out. They all have their own version of Tenola, they have all their own version of Sinigang, which are really kind of convenient to make. So I've had this fish so many times in Palawan and different places in the Philippines. I call it rainbow fish. What I love about it, it has a nice kind of thick leathery skin that when you cook it really helps trap all that moisture and you really taste the fat kind of seep throughout the meat, which is really delicious. And then we have two types of sinigang, maya maya and kiskisan. And then this is the body of the kiskisan. I mean, it's simple food, not necessarily bikulana food, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's food that you find kind of like in these ports, really tasty because you know it's extremely fresh because it literally just came off the boats. And with this kind of view, it's hard to complain. Finally, we were able to see where we slept in the daylight and it's a peaceful spring resort surrounded by towering trees with a beautiful view on the river. I couldn't help myself and just had to jump in. The food has been delicious. They have some local cooks that made us some memorable Bicolano dishes. This morning they served us some dried and fried diles, which was amazing. Some fresh coconuts and lots of eggs and rice to come next. Perfect little snack before we head off for a hike. Camarines Norte has lots of waterfall treks to choose from, depending on how much time you have. We decided to go to Nakali because from the pictures I saw, it seemed like a tranquil slice of paradise and the trek would only take two hours to get there and one hour to come back. Trail update. Ooh, this uh, we're walking through mostly uh, Carabao paths, so it's fairly easy to walk through. A little muddy. I'm um, going through some pineapple fields as well, which are really pretty and lots of coconut trees. So I don't think we're climbing much in terms of elevation. It's still fairly flat. So if you do plan to visit Camarino Sorte and you kind of want to do this two hour hike or you have enough time in your itinerary, I haven't been to the waterfall yet, but I recommend the walk for now. Um, it's actually really peaceful. We're not going to eat you. We're friends. fall hunting that's the sweetest sound I don't know if you guys can hear it but there's a low hum in the background and that means the waterfall is not far behind thinking Perfect. That, was, that was for camera guys it was for camera I was faking it <laughs> something we're five minutes away Everything was really slippery because it was raining on and off. After stumbling through some rocks and ungracefully waddling through the thick bush, we finally arrived. 
This was probably one of the most unique waterfalls I've seen. It's almost completely covered by trees without much sun coming through the top. Get going in, water is freezing. <laughs> From the air, I'm pretty sure you can barely see it. We were told that the area around Mount Labo hasn't really been fully explored and trekked through yet. So this is a reminder that this whole area could potentially have some natural attractions that we missed. I haven't gone in a waterfall in a while. That felt so good. Woo! That was so much fun. So we're currently on a busy highway between Camarines Norte and Camarines Sur and loud car. And I really do feel after spending a few days in Camarines Norte that they are quite overlooked. It's such a chill place that has a certain vibe to it that's hard to kind of put your finger on. It reminds me of Samar a little bit where it's not overly developed but there's lots of special things to do and if you're someone who likes to road trip and who likes to kind of do do-it-yourself travels, it is the absolute perfect place to go. There's some great food, great people. It's not all quiet all the time. Like on weekends, it actually gets really busy. It's such a great province. I really hope that eventually they get transport hubs or just points of access that make them easier accessible. Currently, if you want to go there, you have to fly to Naga City and then drive two hours or drive from Manila like we did, which is quite long. So hopefully they get their own airport. I saw one over there we saw a runway. It's not operational yet. So to any airlines watching, consider it. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you check out all the Beacol videos that we will be putting out on feature very soon. I did a couple more myself. Chef Martin did a couple more. We did a couple of documentaries as well, which are really interesting. Uh, hope you enjoyed Going Coastal. If you do want to see more of Going Coastal, I really, really need you guys to comment below and let us know which coast you want us to drive. Peace out.